Maybe it was the cold. But after a few steps, Renato's optimism started to slump. What if Calaveras couldn't help? Did Renato dare use the Sky Ripper? Oh, he hated that he had chosen this path. It was so much simpler to rescue friends and attack enemies. Even if some of those friends were more trouble than his enemies, some of those enemies had been friends before and might be lovers after. No, okay, it wasn't all that much simpler, no. Physics made his brain hurt. That, at least he was sure of. Bernardo at hot potato. Oh. was remembering all his old tricks and some new ones. Now he really ought to ask for a raise. Focus on the now. The ravens who seemed everywhere all the time. Where did they hatch from? Were there giant raven hatcheries somewhere, or did they have families? Oof, he didn't want to think about these raven mummies raising their darling raven chicks. Yeah, Calveras would help. He would make Renato feel better about using the Sky Ripper. Then Renato wouldn't have to worry about ravens ever again. There was an engraving. Maximum capacity, 130 people.
Focusing all his energies on the Sky River. If Calaveras could not fix it, he'd be out of options. He would have to assault the Imperial fleet empty handed. Calaveras had never let him down. Yeah, of, of course I can make it work better. But when Renato explained about the strings, Calaveras grew thoughtful. Oh, strings, you say? Well, the Arcana do speak of the ties that bind the world. He drew many intricate symbols in the dirt. Yeah, so, um, according to my calculations, uh, each time you fire, I'm afraid there's a 1 in 120 chance you'll destroy the universe. That's pretty good odds. That's like rolling, what, 21 dice and they all come up six. What are the odds of that? What? No! It's more like 2.716s in a row. Anyway, with those odds, it won't happen if I use it just once, Bernardo said. Although he wasn't sure that was entirely right. Yeah, no, no, that's... No, no, that, that, that's not right. Each time you use it... Okay, look. Just don't use it ever. All right, I guess. As he sailed towards the fleet, Renato could see the dropships of the rebels coming out of the clouds. This was it. The big battle. They could not afford to lose this one. What if it didn't go well? What if he had to use the Sky River? Could he risk the entire universe and the throw of a dice? On the other hand, what were the odds of rolling 21? Or was it 2.71? Sixes in a row. He had a feeling they were surprisingly good. That is... bad. Anyway, the odds were big. His brain was hurting again. The battle was not going spectacularly well. What had the Rebels been thinking? They'd been thinking he would bring the Sky Ripper. Or the Iblis Stone. Or that he'd sideline Zenobia somehow. Or turn her. Couldn't he use the Sky Ripper just once? After all, if chances were 1 in 128, that meant he'd for sure be okay the first time. They'd get worse each time he used it, but the first time would be okay, right? He wasn't sure that it was right. So he didn't fire the Sky Ripper. He just brought it along, in case. The new pathway made Renato curious. Someone had told him the odds didn't change just because you'd had a streak of good luck. 
His gut told him that was wrong, though. And he always listened to his gut. On the other hand, 128 chances to win. But one of them would destroy the universe. That seemed a bit serious. Maybe he could defeat the Emperor without firing the Skywalker. Maybe he could bluff, but with a real weapon. Like in cars, and you had three names, but you pretended you had a fist in. Well, that could work. Renato wondered what would happen if he jumped. Would he be rescued by an emergency platform? I really like the sound his sword made in the air. set up the Sky Ripper and let it warm up. He would bluff if he had to. Zenobia came out, flanked by a very daunting platoon of ravens. You won't actually use that, she said in that annoying, I know everything because I'm a cat and you know nothing because you're just a fox voice she had. Or I know the odds. Good. Because there's a real chance you could destroy the universe. No, not the first time I use it. The odds are too low. What? Uh, no. Yeah, sure. The first time, the odds are practically nothing. They only go up if I use it a bunch more times. No, but that's not how odds work. Didn't you pay attention in class? Now surrender, or I'll use it. Just once, he said. Don't. He felt sure the odds were with him. He had to go with his gut. That's what heroes do. Fire, he said. Please? The Skyripper fired. With a tremendous whoosh, the Emperor's flagship went up in flames. It was awesome. And then he noticed there was a hole in the air. A blackness, like a tear in a parchment. Wind was blowing into it, widening it. It grew larger and even larger. Crates fell upwards into it, and the world itself seemed bent, like the reflection on a curved mirror as it poured into the ravenous hole. Ah, oh, 
One in a hundred and twenty-eight. What are the odds? Thought Renardo, and then everything fell into the hole and was gone. Oh, again? But he already had all the secrets he needed. He was sure of that. He must have not used them the right way. Ah, what was the best, worst mistake he could make? Probably trusting that traitor Lapino. The book's pages fluttered to the beginning once again. Faster than before? And he fell. The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong. But he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it. To take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. And he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. Renato finally realized that Lapino was a traitor to the cause. And maybe Renato could use that somehow. Renato couldn't quite put his paw on when he'd realized Lapino was working for the Empire. He'd never exactly seen Lapino sending coded messages to the palace, but he was sure. The rabbit had been on too many disastrous missions where he was the only survivor or where he accidentally missed getting on the boat that went down to the abyss in flames. If Renato could prevent Lapino from getting back to the fleet with all the intelligence he'd probably gathered, it might be worth the trip.